dictionary, compassion is uh, a sympathetic consciousness of others' distress together with a desire to alleviate it. So when we say be compassionate, we are saying that you should care for other well, others' well-being, but not only caring, you are caring and looking for ways to help them out of that situation that they are in, right? So we see several times in the Bible when Jesus had compassion on the people, you know, he, he, he was so compassionate and his compassion wrought so many miracles, you know. Um, it, this compassion wrought so many miracles that it made people to believe in him. It made people to believe in him. I would like someone to read uh, Mark, Mark 8, Mark 8, verse 2 to 3. Another person would read Matthew 9, verse 36 to 38. Another person would read Matthew 14, 14. If you're there, please, you can read. Okay, I would read Mark 2. Okay, you're there? Okay. Mark 8, 2 to 3. I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way because some of them have come a long distance. Amen. Okay. Amen. Thank you. So we see here, the need of the people was that they were hungry. After Jesus was preaching for days, he was human enough to say, how can we send these people away like that? After hearing the word, 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 they were filled with spiritual food and you just tell them, okay, let's share the grace and let's go with empty stomach. You know, Jesus was able to see not just the spiritual need of the people, but the physical need of the people. And he says, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days. So they were listening to Jesus without anything to eat. Amen. And we can see in the later on, we see that um, from the beginning, which was the compassion that Jesus had, it made him at the end to give the result of feeding 5,000 people. The other time feeding 4,000 people. It was compassion that led to that miracle. Compassion was the beginning. Amen. Then someone read Matthew 9, Matthew 9, verse 36. Matthew 9, 36. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Amen. Amen. You can read to 38. 37. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. 38. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest, into his harvest field. Amen. Amen. So when Jesus saw the crowds that were coming to him, both those that needed healing, they heard that Jesus was a healer. Some heard that Jesus was able to raise the dead. Whatever testimonies that was being presented from other regions, you know, they came with their needs to see Jesus. And when Jesus saw them, he saw the needs of the people and he was compassionate to them. And knew, Jesus knew his time, he knew the time he had left on earth. And he knew that there is a need for more people like him on earth who would be able to take care of the people, the needs of the people, and at the same time, give them the, the living word that can help them on this journey. Amen. Amen. And in Matthew 14, 14, we'll see uh, Matthew 14, 14. Mat Matthew 14, 14. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. So we see when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and then he healed them. It was the compassion that, that brought out this 
desire to heal them from their diseases. So imagine Jesus was not compassionate. We would not even be here today talking about Jesus is our savior. If Jesus didn't have compassion to think about us and say, oh, I'm going to take the sin of the world. We will not be here today. We would not be talking about, oh, I am saved. I'm revived. I'm renewed. But because of his compassion towards us, Jesus knew what the world needs. He saw every heart and he still does today. We all need compassion. If we Christians need this compassion in our daily activities, I mean, Pastor Cremilda, you would want someone to really care for you, to care if you are okay. When you are down, you would need the gathering of the brethren, people you call brothers and sisters, to really care about your needs. If you are stuck in a problem, as Christians, we need one another. We need someone who will genuinely care for me and say, oh, Sister Debbie, ah, you've been on my mind lately. Are you okay? Are you all right? Are you fine? But imagine that we just come only to sit and just hear the word and we go. We don't even bother to care about what other people is facing. We don't, need, we don't even tend to care about maybe the weakness of this person. This person is struggling with something. You don't even know. It's happening today in the church. We are, we are discipling each other in as much as we are discipling the nations for God. It starts from here. It starts from our home. It starts from the church. We have to be able to be compassionate to each other. We have to be able to look at each other and say, oh, I, I, I care for you so much, my brother. I care for you, my sister. But today in the church nowadays, it's like to your tent, oh Israel, everyone is minding their business. We only do, hi, hello, the peace of the Lord is with you. Hey, how was your week? And sometimes when we are even asking, how was your week? It's not like... We really want to know. We're just saying, how was your week for formalities? How or when last have you looked at someone and see behind that smile, the pain that someone is going through or the worry that fills the eyes of that person behind the smile when they look at you and greet you in the church? There are many of our brothers and sisters that are going through a lot of things. And if we say we are disciple of Christ, it starts from this. Jesus was healing the sick, but he was still very concerned, very much concerned about Peter's mother-in-law, that he was able to what? Heal her. Why? Because he had the compassion to know what is happening amongst his very own. Now, if we don't start as Christians to check upon ourselves, is it the soul that you go to pray, preach to repent for the kingdom? So when they come, what happens? We leave them like that and just feed on the word, feed on the word of God. The word of God is life. We keep speaking the word, but how our actions, our actions, are they matching our word? When we say love one another, our actions are they matching the word that we speak to people? It doesn't just go to soul winning, go and win souls. When you win them, what happened? Do you send them home on a hungry stomach? Or do you feed them so that they live and they are filled? If we Christians need compassion, how much more people that have not yet come to the knowledge of Christ? As Christians today, we sometimes now hear many words, but less action. Compassion pulls out something within you. If I care for you, it draws something within me to act on your behalf. If I see a friend, what, what example can I use? If I see a friend that needs maybe 20 quai to get a bus card, for one week and I am able to care for this person and say, oh, I don't have up to 20 kwai, but I have five kwai. At least would that work for maybe today? You've done something. It was compassion that pulled out the five kwai from your purse. It's not because of anything 
because out of your lack, you didn't even have up to the 25, but it was compassion that pulled out that five kwai from you to give to the person. It was compassion that pulled out lots of miracles that Jesus did. Amen. Compassion pulls out something from you that makes you impact others. If Jesus was not compassionate, maybe he wouldn't have healed as much as he did. And maybe people wouldn't have believed him. Because people need signs to follow you. Look at the world today. People are crying to be heard, to be seen. And that's the tactics the enemy is using to take people from the kingdom. They're just looking for someone to love them genuinely. But what are the Christians doing? It goes beyond saying, Jesus loves you. You are the Jesus that they see. By how you take care of them, your actions, your compassion to them, asking, are you okay? There's sometimes when, like in my workplace, I would just look at my Chinese teacher sometimes. She would, she would be smiling, but I can see that she's not okay. There is a way you look at someone and you know, you see behind that smile that the person is giving to you. That smile is just formalities. You don't know their bed, how they cried that night. Or you don't know the struggle they're going with. If you look at someone, just stare, for, stare at someone, maybe for even five seconds, look at the person's eyes just for five seconds, you can see something. <laughs> I don't know for you, but me, I can sometimes. Amen. Come and see the man who told me all I ever did. That was the woman at the well. She was confident to share that part of herself to every other person. Why? Because she came to know Jesus. She met a man who genuinely cared about her, who did not just list tell her, oh, you have seven, you, are, you have seven uh, husbands, even the one you are with is not, he, I'm, I'm sure Jesus didn't say it in a way to just poke at her. When he said it, he said, drink from the living well. If you drink from this, my well, you will not be thirsty. He gave her a solution to her problem. That gave her the confidence to go out and tell people, come and see the man that told me all I ever did. And maybe this was just a summary. Maybe she was saying, come on, this person told me that I, I didn't even know that anybody would know that I, have seven, seven, I had seven husbands or seven men. I'm sure she was sharing her testimony. Why? Because she, someone, she saw someone who saw her genuinely and was able to tell her her problem and give her solutions to it. And if we say we are, we are, we are followers of Jesus, we should be like this. We should be solutions to people. Amen. The devil is stealing many people from the kingdom, including Christians, with deception. He comes like he truly cares. And when he sees that you are in his nest, he starts turning your life in so into something different to the point that you don't even know who you are anymore. That's how the devil comes. If we don't take care of our own, the fox will come in and steal. They will come in through a friend. A friend that will act like, oh, they actually see you. They understand you. And then slowly they pull you away. And then as they're pulling you away, you start seeing people who used to be your family as your enemies. And that's why we see some Christians, they're going away. And they're just closing the doors. Why? Because they found something they're looking for out there. Although that way would lead to destruction for them. But we have to look out for our own. We are our brother's keeper. Amen. So that is one virtue. You know, just care for people. Be sympathetic and not just being sympathetic. It goes beyond being sympathetic. Ah, sorry, oh. Ah, I heard this, oh, sorry, oh, and we go. At least if you give the person a hug with the sorry, it helps. Don't just say sorry. If sorry is what you can do at that time, okay. 
but let's be let's be intentional towards each other i'm speaking to myself as well amen It is absolutely good to desire to cast out demons and to heal the sick and to raise the dead. But what are your intentions? Many of us now, we are, we are praying for spiritual, you know, revival. We want to be going to places and people should just be falling like how, you know, the apostles were walking and then Peter's shadow was healing people. Like, I want that kind of power. I want to be walking and just be, you know, healing people up and down that is good but this is one of the things that will bring that power for you jesus look or god looks at our heart the intentions why do you want to be healing people is it so that they say ha ah, once they hear your name ah that girl is a healer she heals he becomes devora the healer then after that what else because that, there are many people who you see, they are looking for miracle so that they will just get it and go. They're not looking to stay. But it's your compassion that keeps them. It's your relationship that keeps them. Amen. The second point is patience. The second virtue is patience. I'll just read through because of time. When we have compassion, we become patient with ourselves and with others. We start to see reasons why someone would do the things they do. Even though it is, even when it is against us, we, we still give them a benefit of doubt. Amen. Now, patience doesn't mean allowing the sin to remain or allowing the abuse to remain. You know, but it means forgiving, admitting the situation that has happened and taking the right steps to make it better. In Colossians 3, Colossians 3, uh, 12 to 14. Colossians 3, 12 to 14 says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. In another version in, in verse 13 says, make allowances for each other's fault. Make allowances for each other's fault. In discipleship, having patience with others shows that we understand that God is patient with us. He convicts us times and time again and never gives up on us. And if we are imitators of Christ, we should not give up on people. The truth remains that it is hard to be patient with people. I can now understand why Peter would ask Jesus, Master, how many times should my brother offend me? And I forgive. Because sometimes people will stretch your limits. They will try you. People will try you. It's not easy. It's hard. But it's possible. In this journey, people will hurt us. Some intentionally. Others not intentionally. But so do we. We also hurt people, sometimes intentionally, sometimes not intentionally, because we still have <laughs> these that we fight with every day. The next point is prayer. And this prayer, I mean interceding for others. It's not now praying for ourselves. It's praying for others. There is a lot to say about interceding for people, but I'll just say this. There is so much growth, oneness, and power that manifests when we pray for other people. They are not just changed, but we are also changed when we pray for people. When you're praying for someone, you're also 
I don't know. It's like they used to say this, like when you point a finger at someone, the rest four is coming back at you. So as you're praying for someone, someone else is praying for you. It might not even be a human. It might be the Holy Spirit that is praying for you as you're praying for other people. You, 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 you came to the knowledge of Christ, not because you prayed, but because someone prayed for you. In John 17, verse 6 to 11, in fact, the whole chapter of John 17 was Jesus praying for us. He was praying for his disciples. The whole chapter was about Jesus praying for you, that you will come to know God. You will come to know him. You'll be consecrated to him. Jesus interceded for us when he was here on earth. So we should pray for others. In Luke 22, verse 31, Jesus told Simon, he said, the devil is trying to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. Jesus knew that Peter would face some challenges you know, that will, he will face some things that would challenge his allegiance to Jesus, to Jesus. Remember when he was saying that even if anybody did do anything, me, I will be with you today. Me, are you for life? And then Jesus said, before the cock crow, you will deny me three times. And even after Jesus resurrected, he was going back to go do his fishing job. But because Jesus interceded for him, he overcame. He came back to the purpose. There are many of us who, our lives, we've gone astray. But it's someone's prayer. Maybe it's your mother or your father or your friend. We don't know. But people pray for you. And you see sometimes you are going this way, going this way. But later, mm, you come back. You come back to the path. Or God brings people that take you back to the path. Jesus told him, when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. So that means Jesus knew that he might go astray, but he would come back. So we also should be able to pray for others, intercede for people, not just your family, people that are not related to you. I remember in times when in church we say, um, you, you are going to pray for this person this week, or you're going to pray for that person this week. It's just the, the church trying to help us grow in praying for people. Have you ever had this compassion that, you know, someone tells you something, maybe on Sunday, they just greet you and you ask, how is everything? Oh, I'm facing this, 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 this. Sometimes we just end up saying, ah, you are in my prayers, oh. And that's the prayer. You are in my prayers. That's it. Me too, I was a victim like that. Ah, you are in my prayers, oh. And that's the prayer. But when God started like helping me to pray for people, there are times I'm, I'm kneeling down to pray. And I want to even, I'm not even thinking about myself. Like I just start hearing people's name come into my head. The moment you start praying for people, the spirit, it propels you in the, in, in the realm of the spirit to be praying for people. And sometimes you don't even know why you are praying for this person. Sometimes I don't even know why I'm praying for the person, but I just feel this pressing need to pray for some, to pray for a particular person. We need to grow in praying for people. Amen. Hey, time. Okay. <laughs> um, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Nowadays, we see how hard it, it has become to confess our sins to each other. You know, in James chapter 5, verse 16, he said that you should pray for one another, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another. Now, ah, to confess our sins to one another, it's, it's like it's not part of the Bible. It's not there. He said, pray for one another, confess your sins to one another. We don't even hear that part. Can I be, in, in, in the gathering of, of the saints, we're supposed to be able to be one that we can instead confess our sins to ourselves and pray for each other. But now we we'll prefer to go and tell someone we don't know. Ah, it's better to tell somebody you don't know, that don't know you. You just tell the person and hear what the person has to say. It's better than you go and tell somebody that you know because they can use it against you in the Christendom. 
Why? Discipleship starts within us, both of us, all of us together. We should be able to have that oneness. That was why even in those days, like um, Ananias and Sapphira, that was why like the Holy Spirit, there was oneness to the point that you didn't have to lie that you did, not, you did not give all the money that you used. Who say you should, you should give part? It's you that decide that you want to give part of the money. But then why do you have to lie that that has all the money? You know? Amen. So, like, nowadays, confessing our sins to one another is hard. Shame is there. You know? We are now, everyone is prone to now hiding our sins and dealing with it alone for, for fear of being judged, for fear of light coming into that place and sin thrives in secrecy. Me, I have tasted and seen that. Sin thrives in, in secrecy. And it will grow like a, a petrol tanker that wants to explode. Boom. Amen. <sighs> <laughs> what becomes the hope of the of the fulfillment in Christian in the Christian life? What becomes the hope of the newly converted if we're not growing? We fight war daily, but when we keep praying for each other, we overcome and we get stronger, and it gives room for increase and growth in the kingdom. Just like in the days of, 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 of old, when they came together and they pray, he says that the, there was increase amongst them. Why? Because they were praying for each other. As they prayed, there was more room. All the Yamayama, all the uh, Jambajan, all the, what, give me the word, <laughs> what is not coming? All the gems, all the nonsense is being purged out. Why? Because you're helping someone that cannot help themselves sometimes. I need you, you need me. Sometimes I can't help myself while I'm weak. I need you to help me in prayers. When we pray for others, we are seeking first the kingdom of God. When we pray for others, we are seeking first the kingdom of God and other things will be added to you. That's why I, I, I said, when you are praying for others, your, your problem gets solved. Why? Because you are sacrificing your own self to pray for someone else. The time you, it's not like you don't have problem. It's not like you don't have issues that you need to sort out, but you decide to suppress that and pray for the needs of other people with a genuine heart, not so that you come and say, ah, I can't, ah, I'm an intercessor. I pray, I pray for people. 10 hours, I pray. No, it's to genuinely pray. Even so, you don't need to say that you're praying for people. The Lord who sees what you do in secret, he rewards you openly with grace that you don't even ask for. Amen. I'd like us to just rise to our feet. I'd like us to rise to our feet and pray. We're praying and we're asking God, Lord, please help me to be compassionate. When I say I care for someone, I really want to care for this person. Because even sometimes they would hurt you, but you still have to pray for them. How many times have someone hurt you deeply and when you want to pray, you feel like just this person, that time the devil will come to your head and say, just wish that this person, something will happen, the person will fall sick and maybe the person will die or the person will fall on the stairs and break their teeth. Sometimes it happens like that. When people hurt you, the devil comes with voices to make you wish for evil to happen to them. But then when you are compassionate, you just, the moment you want to open your mouth, you just, Father, please forgive this person. You just start thinking about who God sees this person as, who this person can be, and you instead pray for the person. So i like us to just open our mouths and just say, God, help me to be compassionate for, for people so that I can disciple your nation, so that I can disciple everyone around me.
Just pray, pray and say, God, help me, help me, Lord. Help me to, to have compassion, to grow in compassion. Help me to be patient. Help me to intercede for other people. I know it's not easy. I know like, when I want to kneel down and pray, I, I just like have many prayer points, but give me that time to sacrifice for other people so that I can, I can pray for them. Let us pray, 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 pray. God help me. Say, Lord, I, I, I place my life, I place my life upon your altar. And I pray, God, that you consecrate my heart. Consecrate my heart. Search me deeply and purge out everything that stands as a limitation that doesn't make me to, to, to produce this compassion to others. God, take it away from my life. Purge me from whatever makes me to always only think about myself, that I don't think about other people. I don't even care to know what is happening. I just say words and I, and I don't act on it. I don't do it. I don't do anything about it. Just pray and say, God, please help me. I want to be like you, Jesus. I want to have compassion <inaudible> like you, Jesus. I want to reach out to the world like you, Jesus. I want to care for my neighbor like never before. I want to, even if it's to just to say hi, to, to, to say sorry, to even when I know that I'm more wrong, but to say sorry to the person just for peace to reign so that I can be able to, to, to bring this person over to you. Lord, help me. Help me, God. Help me, God. Help me. There is no one who has asked God for help that he doesn't help. There's no one that who has genuinely asked God, but I feel me. Help me to grow in patience. The Bible says, clothe yourself in patience. Clothe yourself in kindness. Clothe yourself in compassion. And bind them together in love. Lord, purge me, O God. Father, open my heart. Search deep within me, O God. If there is any way that there is selfishness within me, but I take it out from me. Yes, I know there are people who have hurt me. Yes, I know there are people who have done wrong for me. But God, I pray that you help me to always be compassionate, to always be compassionate, to always think of them and see them the way you see them. I want to see people how you see them. I don't want to see them for what they are doing. I don't want to see them for all the things they are doing. Oh God, help me to see when the devil is using someone. And when, oh God, I need to cast out that devil and see beyond that devil that is tormenting that person. Lord, help me to be patient. It's not easy. We go through the hustle and bustle of life and sometimes our patience is being tried. If your patience is very low, just pray, God, increase my patience. Oh God, increase me. Let me grow in patience. Help me to grow in patience that when I'm tried and tested, oh God, I will come out true. I will come out true, oh God. Help me to intercede for people just as you pray, just as you took some time off to pray. You prayed for people, you prayed for me. God, Jesus, as you prayed for me, help me to pray for others. Help me to intercede. Help me to be angry at what the devil is doing with your people. Oh, my Change my life and let me move with the right intentions. Let me move with the right intentions. I don't want to remain the same. I don't want to remain the same. Help me, Father Lord. Pray, 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 pray. This prayer is, is greater. It is greater than something that you think you have in mind that you want to pray to God about. This one helps you to be righteous. This prayer helps you to grow in righteousness. And when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all those problems you are thinking of, it comes to you. It comes to you. God gives them to you freely, willingly. Man, don't say you are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to do it. 